Get some paper and a pencil and let's practice basic math. All right, so here is our problem. We have 10 divided by 2 times 5 in parentheses squared, all of this over 10. All right, so again, get some paper and a pencil and take this problem one step at a time and do not use a calculator. Now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through exactly how to solve this problem. But first, let me tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. So I'm going to show you the solution here one step at a time and let's see if you can figure out why I'm taking these steps to solve this problem. In other words, I'm going to take one step and then try to justify or figure out why I'm taking that step. Okay, so here is our problem. Now, what do you think is going to be the first step I'm going to take? Well, if you said, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I think you're going to multiply 2 and 5 because they're inside of the parentheses up here. Well, you would be correct. And uh, let's go ahead and just quickly talk about why that is. So we need to recall the order of operations, which is PEMDAS. So in mathematics, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, parentheses, powers, etc. These are called mathematical operations. And we have to do a math problem that has these operations or more than one uh, mathematical operation in a very specific order. So that's why we have to follow this checklist or acronym called PEMDAS. Okay, so PEMDAS stands for the following. So P is parentheses. So if you see any grouping symbols, i.e. parentheses, brackets, or these type of squiggly brackets, that's where you're going to start first. All right, so obviously this is why I took this step right here because we have parentheses. So I'm gonna go inside of those parentheses and start right there. Now, another observation uh, to make in this problem is that we have a fraction. We have a big numerator, and then of course we have a denominator. So what we wanna do here is kind of think of this problem in two parts. In other words, we have the numerator part and the denominator part. So what I'm gonna do is simplify the entire numerator and then we'll deal with this denominator. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up what PEMDAS stands for. So P stands for parentheses or grouping symbols. That's where we're gonna start first. And then E stands for exponents. And an exponent is this little small number in a power. So this big number down here is called the base. This small number here in the top right is called the exponent. So you can think of E as powers. So that should be a good clue on what I'm going to do next. All right, so the next step here in PEMDAS is going to be M and D. This stands for multiplication and division. Now you gotta be really careful with these uh, steps right here, or these steps that involve multiplication and division. So the way this works is we're going to handle any multiplication or division, whatever we see first from left to right. Okay, so once we finish with all uh, multiplication and division, we'll finish up with any addition and subtraction in the problem. Okay, so hopefully you understand the order of operations, and then of course I gave you a real big clue on what we're going to do next. Okay, so the next step is going to be to take this 10 and square it, because we're going through our little PEMDAS checklist here. We uh, took care of everything inside of parentheses. Now you can see here I have a number inside of uh, parentheses, but there is nothing to do. In other words, there's no mathematical operations like this. So uh, that step is done. All right, so we're gonna move on to E, which is exponent. So we have a power right here, 10 squared. So we have to address that. All right, so 10 squared means what? Well, it means take 10 and multiply it by itself. So 10 times 10, of course, is 100. All right, so now here is the problem. We have 10 divided by 100 over 10. Okay, so what do you think we're going to do now? Remember, I said we want to simplify the entire numerator before we take on the denominator. So here is our numerator, and here is our denominator. So we need to address this right here before we talk about this 10 down in the denominator. 
Okay, so 10 divided by 100, what is that? Well, we can write that differently. We can think of 10 divided by 100 this way. So we have 10 divided by 100. So remember, the division operator is the same thing as the fraction bar. So instead of writing 10 divided by 100 this way, we can think of it this way. So we have 10 divided by 100. All of this will be divided by 10. Okay, so what we're dealing with here is something called a complex fraction. Now, a complex fraction is simply a fraction where the numerator or the denominator or both is a fraction. So over here we have in the numerator a fraction. So it's kind of a fraction within a fraction. Okay, so we have 10 over 100 as our numerator, all of this being divided by 10. So let's take the next step. And if you're saying to yourself, hey, Mr. you 2 math man, how about we just kind of reduce this fraction here? Well, that is a good next move. So we have 10 over 100. We can simply cross cancel these zeros. So now we have the fraction 1 tenth. All right, so any opportunity you have to reduce a fraction in the middle of a problem, that's what you should do. Okay, so we still have a complex fraction here. We have 1 tenth divided by 10. So what we want to do is write this complex fraction differently. So we have 1 tenth divided by 10. So let's go ahead and write this complex fraction this way. All right, so 1 tenth divided by 10, we can either write it this way as a complex fraction, or we can express it this way, 1 tenth divided by 10. All right, so at this point, all we have to do is do some basic fraction division, and we will be done with the problem. So how do we divide fractions? Well, this is very easy. Okay, so we have 1 tenth divided by 10. Now, again, we can write this problem as a complex fraction, 1 tenth divided by 10, or we can express it this way, 1 tenth divided by 10. Now, what we want to do is think of this 10 as a fraction. So anytime you have a number and you want to think of it as a fraction, simply put it over 1. Okay, so how do we divide fractions? Well, this is very easy. What we're going to do is change this problem from division to multiplication. So anytime you are dividing fractions, what you're going to do is go from division to multiplication by flipping the fraction to the right of the division symbol upside down. Okay, so we're going to go from 10 over 1 to 1 over 10. All right, so let's not be confused here. We're going from uh, division to multiplication, and we're flipping this fraction, 10 over 1, upside down or finding the reciprocal. So now this is 1 over 10. All right, so now we have 1 tenth times 1 over 10. All we have to do now is multiply these fractions, which is very easy. Okay, so how do you multiply fractions? Just multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 1 times 1 is 1, and 10 times 10 is 100. So the final answer here is 1 over 100. Okay, now if you got this right, that is fantastic. And uh, if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, maybe take a quick second and hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. Now, if you want to improve in basic mathematics, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. But uh, also, I have two courses that you may be interested in. The first is my Math Foundations course. And this is a quick course that covers basic arithmetic, all that good stuff that we learned way back in elementary and uh, primary school. Now, if you want to kind of take it a step further and learn basic math, but you're interested in some algebra and geometry as well, you might want to check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Now, if you happen to be in a math class like pre-algebra, Algebra 1, you'll find links to all these courses in the description of this video. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.